sports events, some think, amount to unscripted theater. Sometimes the script is played out as much off the field as on. An example, the Kansas City Comets. Six months ago, the Comets were in trouble, so a group of 26 investors bought the team. The Comets are said to be out of danger, not out of the red, out of danger, and now there's a new threat to the Comets, having to do with whether or not their league survives. The reporter is Tom Gower. You no doubt have heard the forecast of doom and gloom for the major indoor soccer league. Television and newspaper reports detail the financial woes of several teams in the league and raise questions as to whether the league could field enough teams to play next season. Well, the MISL is down, but not out, at least not yet. However, last Friday, the league handed down an ultimatum to its players. Accept new terms, or the MISL's 10th season will be its last. Although the standings don't reflect it, these are two of the most successful clubs in the major indoor soccer league. For years, the Cleveland Force topped the league in attendance. This year, the Comets have edged out the Force as indoor soccer's top draw, averaging almost 11,000 a game. Yes, these are two of the biggest success stories in the MISL, and chances are, neither of these teams will make a nickel of profit this season. In this league, success means your team doesn't lose as much as the other teams. There's not been a year, for example, that, uh, that any team except Cleveland has, has even broke even or turned a profit. That's got to change. You'll attract nobody else to the league. You'll also see continued turnover, and you won't see expanded teams. Expansion is, or was, a top priority of the league. Expanding is now on the back burner. But hope for expanding the MISL is slim if teams can't break even, let alone make a profit. Uh, it didn't take me too many weeks of looking at the financial statements and the cost to, to realize that the, the teams were heading towards trouble. I think the Kansas City Comets are one of the more positive teams in the league. Our marketing programs, our sales efforts have generated probably more revenues than some of the other teams, and, we're, and we have a tough time looking for bottom line of zero. So with that in mind, it doesn't surprise me that we've had to come to this point. That point is too many teams losing too much money. A number of teams, notably St. Louis, Chicago, and Minnesota, gave serious thought to moving their teams, selling out, or closing up shop altogether. The last option sent a wave of concern through the league. I think if enough teams are in trouble, then yes, it means the Comets are in trouble, because there won't be anybody left for the Comets to play. And you have to have a structure within the league where all the teams, or at least the majority of the teams, can succeed at the gate and uh, in the business office or there's something that has to be changed about that to make it to make it better for everybody. That sentiment echoed throughout the league. And so after meeting with the owners, the MISL drew up what is called a compensation stabilization proposal. According to a news release, the proposal offers a compensation plan that will stabilize the league and add to its potential for growth. And with emphasis on stabilization and expansion, the league's players will benefit significantly over the next two years. Among other things, the proposal calls for a reduction of the present salary cap from almost $1.3 million per team to under $900,000 per team, and a new player agreement which will eliminate the no-cut and no-trade contracts. For its part, the owners will increase the amount of their letters of credit with the league and increase the player playoff pool from $100,000 to $220,000. MISL Commissioner Bill Kentling set an April 15th deadline for acceptance by the Players Association, saying if the proposal is not accepted, the MISL will terminate in June. It will not be economic, economically feasible to run an MISL. We need to bring that sanity to it. The proposal's on the table. There'll be other counter proposals. There'll be some changes, but basically the cost structure must be reevaluated. Teams are losing from a couple hundred thousand to a million and a half dollars a year, and they only generate about two and a half million a year, so that tells you how much overspending is going on. It's not that all of the teams are carelessly throwing their money around. But the MISL lacks what the other major league sports have to give a big boost to team income, a major television contract. You won't see cameras from any of the big networks anytime soon, due to a lack of interest nationally in indoor soccer. That comes from one of the guys whose job it is to help generate interest. I think we're still, a, you know, in a lot of areas, you know, we're still a regional sport. You know, I mean, if, you know, who's... You look down in Florida, you know, in that area, you know, up north, you know, what's the, the southernmost city we have? If you don't, I mean, Dallas, 
Dallas is more, to me, coming from Cleveland, Dallas is more west than it is south. And, uh, you know, so, you know, if you look at the MISL, uh, it's still kind of on a regional, regional basis. Uh, I don't know what all we have to do. Well, I mean, a lot of people could say, well, you could give the scores on SportsCenter, on ESPN, or you could, uh, on NBC, you could give it in between the uh, NFL games or something like that. Expanding the league into other markets would help generate a more national appeal for the sport. Word from the MISL is that expansion into Worcester, Massachusetts, near Boston, and Greensboro could occur if the stabilization package receives approval by the players. But some of the players are obviously less than enthusiastic about the whole matter. Oh no, this time next year we'll probably have another major catastrophe once they get over this uh, salary problem. Then they'll, they'll come up with another, again this is my opinion, they'll come up with another uh, problem that says, well if we don't get this uh, ratified, if we don't go play, for example, if we don't uh, have an average of 10,000 people a game, we're not going to be able to perform. The league's going to go out of business. So a year and a half ago, they, you know, when, when they argued we needed a salary cap to save the league of 1.2 million, whatever it is right now, you know, we needed that, we needed that, you know, we, we, you know, we, we got that. And then like a year and a half later saying, well, we, we, we got to lower it to three, you know, to 850,000, you know, and, uh, and that's the, you know, a lot of players are saying how that, you know, over a year ago we made that decision. Now you come back to us again in a year and say, hey, you know, we're going to close shop if we don't lower it. I really feel that, you know, the, the league obviously does have some weak points uh, that every year seems to have some weak points and uh, there's a lot of good positive strong sides that have come out in the last week or so as well so i think that the, the league looks to be in pretty good shape except for the fact that they say that they have to have this pay cut or they're going to fold we need to get some positive uh stuff out of this you know we've had a lot of negative stuff in the past and the league going to fold and this and this and this so we, we, we got to start hearing some positive things about the MISL. From the most objective source involved, the news isn't all that positive for labor or management. Dick Calvert is called the Dean of MISL Broadcasters and has been around since the league's infancy, around long enough to pass judgment on both the players and the owners. I think the owners are number one. In other words, if they cannot keep their house, if they cannot, cannot keep their house in order, then they are the, the first to blame. Certainly the media amplifies that. I mean, that's the job of the media to sniff out these problems and amplify them because it is news. But I would say that if we can't get on national television in the MISL, certainly the players shouldn't be making $200,000 a year. By the way, I'm a soccer fan and a Bud man. And for all you do out there... But Calvert's view of the league's future is considerably brighter, even if he is a Bud man. I think, I really think the MISL is in a pretty healthy position, even though a couple of clubs are struggling. Things are a little bit shaky now, but hopefully with a little bit of, uh, you know, work between two parties that uh, things can be worked out and, you know, let's, get, let's make the MISL a successful league to, to play in. We're not going to ask the players to accept anything unfair. Our report here in Kansas City, we feel, is very good with the players, and we, uh, we need to earn, continue to earn their respect, and they're going to, and they're going to earn owners' respect. And I'm, I'm confident we're going to be able to work this through. Do you think the league's going to be here next year? Oh, yeah. I should. I mean, I haven't sent out my resumes anywhere. 